The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, traders. All right, so welcome to the Bookmap Professional Trader Webinar Series. Today, uh, we have Scott Pulsini. Uh, we've had him a few other times in the past, and uh, uh, excellent trader. Uh, he's been trading for over 20 years, uh, and then during the years of 2002 to 2005, uh, Scott was very, very actively trading the S&P E-mini and was responsible for about 10% of the total volume of that E-mini uh, futures product. Uh, so uh, hard to believe and just hard to believe the, the kind of nerves of steel that uh, uh, Scott must have. Um, but now Scott focuses on trading both equities and futures. Uh, he's an expert scalper, innate abilities here to quickly read the order flow and react. Uh, within the volume and price patterns and order book. Okay, so a quick uh, uh, review of the risk disclaimer, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, and then uh, if you're interested in Bookmap, uh, here's our info at book, um, bookmap.com is our website. Twitter is our at bookmap underscore pro. And then email us at support at bookmap.com. One more page here. Uh, if you're interested in reaching out to Scott, he is a um, uh, educator partner here at Bookmap. Uh, he offers mentoring services. Here's his website, here's his email, his Twitter, uh, and then Bookmap special offers from Scott as well. Don't worry, I'm gonna put this into the chat right here and you'll have all of the links here uh, that you can click on uh, and then uh, and take you right to uh, the uh, whatever it is you're interested in. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let me uh, turn it right over to Scott. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, do you hear me? Yep, you sound great. Okay. Um, and see, yep, I see oops. your uh, Arizona landscape with your daughters. Okay, awesome. Um, so do you want me to go through my history quickly again for new listeners or you just want me to jump into trading how do you um yeah maybe, maybe quickly go through um it's such a incredible story <laughs> so yeah it is uh was anyway <laughs> that, that's you know that's why i like to tell the story just to show you know that i'm not some you know million dollar trader like i used to be um you know with the whole idea is with this program i i know i'm on my way back to that because you know, once you hear the story, you know, when it all disappeared, I searched for years and years and years to find something that would help me, you know, be above average. And before I was above average reading the order flow, and when, when that went away, I, I had nothing, you know, and I was just basically a, a schlep looking at these charts, these bar charts, and, you know, with very mediocre success. So um, the whole point is, you know, that's why I agreed to do these webinars with Bookmap, because <clears throat> it is the you know, I say it every time, it's the most powerful thing that I've ever seen in the marketplace, um, bar none. And especially in these, uh, these these times that we've been seeing the last, you know, month or two, it's uh, it's invaluable. And you're going to see some of these setups that um, it's really going to kind of make things a lot more clear about what's going on in these markets and, you know, how they're manipulated or, you know, how the big money's playing. And, so you'll see. So anyway, you know, my story is I started, um, you know, I started following stocks when I was younger, 15, 16 with my grandpa. And then back then, obviously, there's no internet because I'm uh, old, 48. <laughs> um, but uh, very interested. I went to college, um, St. Ambrose University. Business finance was my major. And I always knew I wanted to, you know, be involved in the stock market. <clears throat> and, um, you know, when I graduated, I tried to become a financial advisor. I don't think I've ever told this story either. But um, and it was just, uh, I, you know, I had an internship at Smith Barney in Chicago, and it was just too slow and boring for me. So my friend actually had worked at, the, he was working at the Board of Trade, and he got me a job down there um, being an ARB clerk in the five-year option pit, um, bond option, or uh, note option, I'm sorry. So that kind of, it kind of was introduced to trading. You know, I went from, couldn't be more boring, you know, cold calling people to right in the middle of the uh, of the war and the action in these pits, 
and it's quite quite eye opening, you know, when you get down there and you see exactly what's going on, especially some of these veteran traders in the pits. I mean, trading on the screens is nothing compared to what these guys used to do in the pits. It, it was absolutely amazing. I never personally traded in the pits, but uh, it was quite incredible. So, <clears throat> and I, I um, was on the board of trade for about four years, and I worked my way up, and I was a arm clerk for a couple big brokers. Um, I moved into the bond pit, which is, you know, the most stressful thing you can ever imagine times 10. I mean, I, I literally equated to maybe being in a war where if you make a mistake, you you can literally kill your broker financially. Um, and that's how stressful it is. I mean, you've got houses, you know, flinging your signals at you nonstop and, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line. So kind of learn how to be calm under pressure there. And then uh, one of my buddies started working at a trading firm um, called King Street Trading where they were trading electronically and it was brand new back then this was you know 2001 and I you know I begged them for months to get me a job because I knew that was what I wanted to do um, especially you didn't tell me some of these stories about these guys making millions of dollars you know right off the bat so I begged him to get in there and he got me a, you know he finally um, got the owner Chuck McElveen to give me a job and uh, I sat down my very first day and I lost $2,500 trading one <laughs> One lots in the e mini S&P, uh, which anybody who trades uh, knows that's almost impossible to do. Um, and I'm, I'm not talking putting on one lot and holding it. I'm talking about in and out the entire day, and I lost $2,500. Like I, I almost got fired the first day. So, you know, then I went the next month, month and a half, and I lost you know every single day, every single day, and just trying to figure out because back then there was no education for these these futures markets on, on the screen, right? So it was like they put you in front of the screen, said figure it out. And if you figure it out, you're golden. If you didn't, you were gone. So I lost money every day my month and a half. And then 9-11 happened and they shut the markets down um, for a week, uh, which I think may happen again here, <laughs> but we'll get into that later. Um, so I had to, you know, I, again, I was about to get fired. So I had to figure out what I was doing quickly. Uh, so I decided to trade overnight in the German DAX, kind of just try to see if I can figure something out. And I started actually making some decent money in there. Uh, every night I would make, you know, between $500 and $1,000 a, a, a night. And it felt pretty good to, you know, by five in the morning, I was up a thousand bucks, you know, so, you know, mo most people can't make that kind of money. And I was just thrilled. I was tickled that I was doing that. And, you know, I was showing I had some kind of promise. And then the uh, E-mini S&P, or the you know the equity markets open back up a week later, and I employed what I learned in the uh, German DAX to the e mini S and P, and started making money consistently. And um, I mean, a small amounts relatively for trading, right? I mean, again, there were some guys at that firm, at that, my firm, that were making millions of dollars. So, you know, I, I was I was slowly but surely making my way. Um, and it got to the point where everything just clicked for me and I, I knew I had figured it out about what I wanted to see, was, you know, something in the market and what I was seeing. So I actually made the owner of the firm a bet that I would be the number one trader in 2002. And mind you, I was about to get fired, you know, a month before. And then I, I go in there making this ludicrous bet at the time. And he, of course, took it. I mean, we, it was just more of a gentleman's bet. We bet a you know, golf trip. I think he was just kind of chuckling that he was about to fire me anyway. So go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll make this bet with you. So lo and behold, the following year, um, I ended up being the number one trader at King Street. That was 2002. I made $2.8 million that year. And then the year after that, you know, I started obviously increasing my size, scaling up, scaling up, because what I was doing works which usually happens in the futures markets, you know, if it works with a one lot, you can do it with a thousand lots. So then I started trading, you know, bigger and bigger and bigger. And, I, you know, I started out again, trading ones and twos like everybody else, but that's, that was my gift. It's, you know, it is still my gift where I can trade size and not panic, right? Most traders, once they get out of their comfort zone, you know, as far as contracts traded <clears throat> or shares traded, they don't think the same way, right? They start to panic. They start to say, oh, you know, this is worth this much money. I'm going to lose things like that. So my my gift was I, I could put on, you know, I felt the same way whether I had a one lot on or a thousand lot on. Like it, it hurt the same way to me. So, you know, I, I scaled up and then all of a sudden I started making millions. And in you know, 2003, I made 10 million. 2004, I made 1.8 million. So you're talking $15 million over three years for my firm. Um, and then all of a sudden, 2005, 2006 happened where uh, low volatility coupled with these algorithms that started to take hold in the market. Uh, I, I went from literally making millions of dollars to couldn't make a dollar overnight. 
So, you know, I, of course, hung on and kept fighting and, you know, you got to remember, it's not like you, when you're that big of a trader, it's not like you go down, you're, you're wise enough to go from trading 1,000 lots, 500 and 1,000 lots to back down to normal size. Um, so, you know, I went from, couldn't make money, then all of a sudden I started losing money, you know, and I'd be, you know, losing a couple hundred grand in a day, 100 grand, 300 grand, and had some really bad days, and then it just started going downhill. So, you know, 2007, my firm and I decided, decided to part ways. I mean, a lot of the traders were blown out. I mean, at the high King Street trading was like 70 traders, and when I left, they were down to like 12 or 13. So, everyone was was feeling you know it was much obviously much more difficult to trade but um you know I, it was it was a pretty trying time but i always figured i always thought to myself oh i can figure this out i'll you know, I'll, I'll learn a new method and lo and behold i went another six seven years <laughs> trying to reinvent my style to be more of a longer term trader and it just you know again i'm at best a mediocre trader trading longer term on these you know for swing trading type of trades and you know, I always knew my gift was fast mental processing, but I, I just, you can't do it in these markets unless you know, you know, how to write programs. And even then you're not really processing anything. You're just writing a program to process it for you, which I didn't have that ability. So I struggled for years and years and years and couldn't make a dollar. And <clears throat> 2013, I had to say uncle for a couple of years and because I had to support my, you know, my family. And then, uh, a couple of years later, um, you know, Dr. Brett Steenbarger, who wrote a, uh, the book uh, Enhancing Trader Performance, um, he sat behind me for a year and he wanted to see what, you know, what made elite performers tick. And, you know, it's about trading, but also about, again, elite performers like Michael Jordan, things like that, and what all these elite performers have in common. So anyway, he sat behind me for a year and I got to become very good friends with him. And he's always been a, you know, a big big cheerleader for me, wanting me to make it to the top again. And he had contacted me um, about a year year ago, telling me about this uh, incredible software called Bookmap. And he's like, this is kind of right up your alley of what you used to do, where you can see what, what's happening in the marketplace. And <clears throat> so I started to use it. I mean, the minute I, the minute I brought it up, I was just floored. I mean, it, it, this is, it was exactly what I used to look at in the trading dome depth of market, but it was laid out in a, in a manner where you can see where where these algorithms were playing their games. You can see where the real money was, where guys really wanted to interact. Um, so when I saw that, I'm like, you know, the light went on again, just like it went on when I made that my initial bet with the uh, owner of King Street. So um, I spent the last I've spent the last year uh, trading, and I'm on the upswing, huge compared to where I was, and. You know, that's why I agreed to do these webinars because if, if it wasn't for Bookmap, I would be probably completely out of the markets. That's how, um, and, I, and I know a lot of traders feel the same way. I mean, it's all relative whether you, you know, certain traders are making 100 grand a year, 200 grand. A lot of traders have been blown out just because you can't compete with these computers until now, right? So, um, and again, you know, Bookmap is a little bit of an art, but once you understand what you're looking at, um, I think it's it's actually more of a science than an art if you can. You know, and, and it, the thing is, it, it's the same across all platforms or all all instruments, I should say. So, you know, the same things that work in the E-mini S&P, work in the SPY, work in stocks. Um, so <clears throat> I've also switched over to stocks. I trade equities as well. Uh, I've talked about that in the past in some of these webinars. But what I what didn't really hit me because um, I had a, you know, a decent size account for the equities that most traders can't really trade equities that are you know, underfunded or just beginning because you need uh, a minimum $25,000 in your equity account or you're labeled a day trader and you're limited to five trades a week, which is just absolutely asinine, but it is what it is. So unless you maintain a $25,000 balance in a stock account, and that includes trading options, you can only make five trades a week. So that's not very helpful for, for most traders. So I didn't, that didn't really strike me until recently that, you know, most traders probably are, trading futures just because you need, you know, such low, little margin, you know, to trade or um, equity to trade in some of these markets up until actually recently where they're, you know, they're increasing the margin calls and stuff like that. But um, so, you know, for this webinar, I'm going to talk more about uh, trading futures and, you know, just a couple key things that you should be looking for when you're trading, especially in these crazy, in, in insane markets, right? I mean, the whole idea is to control your risk, but in these markets, obviously, and I'm talking futures now, um, you just, 
it's real hard to control your risk. I mean, you're going to get stopped out if you try to, you know, you're even the even the S and P like my before this craziness, I my stop loss would be at the, at the most three points. You know, now it's you know 15, right? So it's like, but you know, thankfully for you know smaller trader, you can trade those micro, you know, e mini micro, <clears throat> um, or you know the mini uh, crude crude oil contract. To help you know, help you kind of you know manage your risk, and you can have larger stops without you know blowing out your account. So, um, so that's basically my my history in a nutshell. I'll go into the trades here, but any questions going into that, Bruce? Uh, nope. Okay. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> what I want to go over today is kind of. I'm praying I don't lose my screenshots, which I've done a couple times in the last couple of webinars. But so the whole key to trading, you know, futures, in my opinion, and I'm going to show you, is you want to know where the big money is trading, right? You want to see the games. You want to know, you know, if it's algo algorithm uh, ridden or if it's real money and people really want to, you know, get involved in these in these areas. So. <clears throat> what I've been noticing, and I actually learned this from Bruce, as far as the liquidity levels and how these markets tend to travel to these liquidity levels. And I always knew it was valid, but with this craziness, you know, the, the volatility lately, it's been just absolutely golden to know where these liquidity levels are in these futures markets. So um, what I do, you know, when I bring up the markets in the morning, I will look at uh, even the S and P, the SPY, which is obviously the tracking stock for the, the S and P, uh, the Nasdaq, and the QQQ, and then I also trade the crude. But I'm going to show you here in these examples how. So let me back up for a second. So you got to remember these the big money cannot trade, cannot chase the market, right? If if they put, especially in these these markets where the liquidity is it evaporates right so you know if a big fund tries to get in here and, and buy you know a thousand e-mini S&Ps the thing's going to rip 30 points probably more in these markets right so the way the way that the game they play is they put their resting orders in the book and then they eventually drive the market into those orders they get filled and then they're good to go right so and now don't get confused with that means it's going to happen immediately right it's it, my point is it's going to happen it's just at what what time of the day it's going to happen right so you know you still have to figure out a way to a place to enter in these markets but bookmap helps you do that as well but what you're really getting here with bookmap is uh, it's literally they should call it a treasure map because that's exactly what you're getting because you you know exactly where these markets are going to trade I'd say, especially lately, 80, 90% of the time, eventually, right? So it's your job to kind of figure out where to enter, but it makes trading a lot easier if you have a bias and you have a direction where you're leaning and you can be patient and wait for your time to strike and then and then play that move to the liquidity. That makes sense. So instead of, you know, most traders, and I've, I'm, I'm guilty of this too, get in there and they want to trade both sides. The market's ripping both ways and they're long and they're short and they're long. And I'm telling you, you know, from my experience, the best way to do this is to use what I'm teaching here today and kind of come up with a thesis for the day and stick with that, you know, until unless you're proven wrong. But again, most of the time it's going to travel to liquidity. So these examples I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you a couple short examples um, where the liquidity is all resting below where you want to find your your whole mindset is finding an area to get short. Right, and that you're not risking, obviously risking a lot of money. It doesn't mean, so you know, for instance, you you see this, this is the E mini. It doesn't mean on the open. So this was on, uh, this is on the 12th, I believe, um, 12th or 13th, where it opened limit down, and then it it didn't open till. Um, so this is um, this is Pacific time. So this was 8:45. So it didn't open for 15 minutes into the over 15 minutes into the open uh, past the 8:30 open central open. So it doesn't mean the market opens up and you just short the market, expecting it to go to these liquidity levels, right? Again, you want to find certain spots to short. In these examples, I don't really show you where to short because I didn't actually short it. I, I, I waited, but I'll show you where I did short. So hopefully that's not confusing, but. So this is um, this is the mini S and P on the open, and 
when you look at this, right, most novice traders will look at this and say, oh, look at all this, look at this huge, so all these are for the newer uh, book map users. These uh, orange or red areas, I'm colorblind, so I'm assuming they're orange, dark red. All this is is large volume in the book, right? So you can see the volume there, you can see the volume there. It's a lot easier to try and to see this liquidity laid out like this than discern it in the book saying, oh, it's 477, is that a lot comparatively, relatively, right? All you have to do is look at this and you don't even have to look at this order book, right? Which I highly recommend you don't. I mean, I have this up here for trading purposes to enter my orders, but you don't even need to look at this because you start looking at this, especially in these markets, your, your head's gonna pop off because you're just, it's so confusing and the, you know, the orders pull them, pull them, put back in, pull them, put back in. And that's the whole idea of book map where you don't confuse yourself looking at the dome anymore. Um, you know, you, you look at look at it laid out in this manner where it's showing you relatively what are big orders and where they're at, right? So the whole idea is if you see these orders put in here from, you know, obviously before the open or right at the open, these guys want to get filled, right? This isn't a game. I'm going to show you what a game looks like, and, um, but this is, these are real orders, right? So again, back to what I was saying, most novice traders will look at this and say, Oh, there's you know there's big bids in here. I, I want to be a buyer because you know I got all this I got this to, to lean on where it's got to go through all this to you know to go down, which is right in certain circumstances. But in these and especially in this environment, these orders are they want to get filled, right? These are this is the big money and the big money will win eventually. This market will again 80 90 percent of the time before at some point in the day it will trade into these orders. These guys. You got to remember they have so much size and they can control these markets where they'll play the game, they'll play the game. You know, you'll think it's going up, you'll get long, and then it'll eventually just go right into these orders. And then they get filled, and then it goes. You know, then it'll turn around and go where you thought it was going to go initially. So the way I the way I do it is, you know, in the morning I'll bring up like so the, again. This is the mini S and P, and I got a lot of examples here. Um, this is the shit. Let me see if I can. So I have this on a different screen. Um, I'll just have to drag them over because I, I was going to try to move this to a different screen, but I don't want to screw it up. So anyway, so this is the SPY. So, you know, this is the same, um, you know, this is the open at just past uh, 850 Central, 650 my time. Um, so again, liquidity, 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 right? Um, the E-mini. This is the same. This is the same thing. Liquidity, this is mini S and P. Liquidity, liquidity. Um, this is the uh, NQ. Liquidity, liquidity, liquidity. Right. These are all different markets. But this is this should be telling you something that somebody somebody wants to get long, and these markets are going to move to the to that price to those prices eventually. This is the QQQ. Right. The tracking stock for the NQ. Right. So they're all very similar. Um, and what what's what's occurring right so the whole point is you want to find areas to get short for moves into this liquidity right so when this opened i didn't get short right away i wanted to see how it kind of reacted in these market or uh, you know at the at the initial liquidity because a lot of times again it'll do this then it'll rip up and then it'll eventually come down so i was kind of patient with this this was again uh, last thursday i believe um so this was so this was last Thursday, where this was liquidity. I was showing you. It looked like it was going to rip into it. This is the mini S and P, and then they came out with the the Fed came out with their, you know, ridiculous intraday injection four trillion dollars into the you know um, into the bond market, whatever it was. Again, it doesn't matter what it is. It just matters that it happened, right? So you had this huge spike up, right? So even if you got short here, um, which was very understandable. You know, as long as you have your areas where, you know, again, you, you got it, and I'm gonna show you again, and actually from today where I got short and I lost just right before I came on, it, it's fine to lose, right? You're not going to be 100%, you're not even gonna be 50% most time. Most, most great traders are 50% or less, but they make multiples on their trades when they're right, right? So they're risking, you know, one to make eight, one to make six. So you can be wrong. So even if you got short here saying, okay, I think this is going to go because it, you know, it did open up limit down and it can easily go down in the next, you know, um, 
level where it goes limit down again. I think it's, it was 7% and then 15%. So there was nothing wrong with getting shorter initially, as long as you can control your risk. And if you're wrong, which you would have been, you're out and you wait for your next opportunity, right? So this was this was the announcement. So there's a couple of things I want to show here in the mini S&P. First of all, so this is very telling. This announcement came in and you can see all this huge buying, right? So this is obviously the algos and the traders that have the, the squawks and they hear before most traders. But look at this liquidity that was in this book that immediately pulled out of the market, right? So this tells you when you start seeing this and then you see the liquidity gone, there's something bigger happening, right? They, these guys are these are the informed traders, right? So they yank this they yank the size one or two reasons. One one they don't want to get run over because of news. Two because especially in the mini S and P you need you know you need um, access to your capital, right? It's not like trading stocks where you know you can trade hundreds of thousands of shares. I mean in S and P you need a lot of um, money in your account to be able to put on you know, thousands of contracts. So what this tells me is once this happened, the guys that were waiting for their fills here pulled all their op pulled all their bids so they can get involved, right? Because they can't have all these resting and then get involved as well, because it's just, you know, most firms have a certain amount of size they can put on and then they're, you know, then they, they're tapped. They can't put any more size. So my point is when you saw all this liquidity pull, there's something going on, right? So that should just alert you, stay out of the way, just let this kind of settle down and then look for areas to enter short. Again, your bias going into this was short. You don't want to chase this up. I mean, if you got lucky, I mean, yeah, I guess you can try to jump in, but you know, you, you're going to see this thing, especially in these markets, as you've seen almost every day, it, it'll make this, it'll make a ridiculous run and then it'll turn around and sell off. Right. So again, I was leaning short. I'm not, I'm not looking at this area to get long, right. I'm going to let this play out. Then I'm going to look for areas to short. So, and it doesn't always necessarily mean it's going to be heavy liquidity, especially when, it, when it's a surprise news event, which this was, right? So the guys didn't even have time to set up their, I mean, this is light liquidity here. So if you're looking for a short, you want to see, you want to wait till you see the sellers fighting back, right? So I see this and I'm just patient. I mean, I guess you could have gotten here, but I never, I never will sell the first down blip, right? I'm going to see, I want to make sure it can kind of hold and then go. So this was, you know, straight buying. Again, I'm not getting long. I'm just waiting for areas to get short because I know. So in this instance, you don't really know, hey, is it going back to liquidity? But if you bring up, um, if you bring up the, this is the SPY, right? So look at the SPY, all this liquidity stayed in there. So that told me, that confirmed that in the E-mini S&P, those guys pulled their orders just so they can get involved in this because they couldn't leave their orders resting and get involved. But two, that these markets were eventually going to come down into this liquidity, right? Um, let me see. Right. So this was um, this was Nasdaq liquidity starts to turn over, and I'm going to go over what I saw here in a second. I just want to show you how I knew. You know, not to change my my short thesis just because that run up, just because I saw that liquidity pull in the mini S and P. All you have to do is go to your other markets, right? And you should have all of these markets up, even if you're not trading stocks. You should have the QQQ, the SPY, um, the NQ. And I'm going to show you why for other examples as well, besides this one. But all these other markets, all this liquidity stayed in the book. So I'm I know in my mind from my experience that I just need to see some sellers come in, and that's going to be my key to get short and play the move down on this liquidity, right? Again, if all this liquidity would have pulled, then I got to reassess. But again, I'm waiting, I'm looking for the best areas to get short. And, you know, I got a gift with this move to get to get short at really good prices. So you can see in all these markets where, you know, again, you don't want to get short when you see the buyers running. And this was the blip in the mini S&P I was telling you about as well. You don't want to get short when you see these buyers running over people, right? You want to get short when you start seeing sellers fight back. I mean, you can see this, the size of these bubbles, you know, it's pretty significant, especially because there was none on the way up. So the minute you you see these, that could be your signal to get short, right? So, you know, if you're trading the, the QQQ, you can get short around 189, risk it up to, you know, above this or the higher. You're risking, you know, two and a half, three bucks. Um, the other markets, I'll get to this one in a second. 
this was the spy, right? Same thing. It actually, someone did put some liquidity in, and then you saw here come the big sellers, much bigger than anything you've seen here. As soon as you see this, you can get short, put your stop above here if you're trading spies. Um, e mini SP, same thing. Now, granted, you know, you got to remember if you're trading one loss in e mini SP and you see this, you're basically risking. I mean, this would happen right around 35 ish, 26, 35. I mean, you got to risk, you know, 30, 30 points to, and again, you want to have a good risk reward, and we'll get into that too, but you're risking 30 points, but you know if you're right, you're catching a, a 200 plus point move, right? Or 150 point move. So that's a five to one ratio. Again, most people can't risk 30 points on a one lot. That's why you trade the micro in mini S&P and then it makes it more manageable. And it doesn't matter what you want. This is, this is just how it is, right? This is how these markets are trading. So if you want to participate and you don't want to get stopped on, on nonsense, you have to risk a back above here if you know, so you don't get stopped down on just, regular market you know algo nonsense so my point is on all these different markets once you saw the selling come in you can get short here put your stop above here and play to the liquidity um any questions on that so far bruce yeah yeah we're getting a bunch of questions here um so okay. let's see um and and guys get your questions in if you if you have any for scott here uh so um just a minute scott let me get them prepared here Uh, I guess the first question is what what is the 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 heat map setting you're using uh on the upper and lower cutoff if you could if you could show that uh well I guess you can't these are images um but yeah uh, um well I could bring this up here this is real time oh okay so I, I mean it's basically defaults I mean you can adjust the bubbles here um and again I use red and blue because I'm colorblind and I also use um so instead of red and green because they look the same to me and I also use if you right click on the um on the, wait a second here. How do you bring up the uh, volume dot settings, Bruce? I thought usually yeah, you right click. You, oh, that yeah, there, there you go. Is. Okay. Yeah, you just so, got so, right. So I use the 3D bubbles and I use the volume delta. Right. I don't like this look because um, it's too subjective. Right. It's like I, it's yeah. You can see there's sellers here, but there's sellers here. It confuses me. And you want to keep things as simple as possible. Right. This is this look is simple to me. Volume delta. Buy minus sell, and you can see who's winning, who's losing, right? This is real time, by the way. Um, so again, right here, so say you're trying to get short and you just, this is nothing but buying this entire time, right? Now it's finally running some liquidity. You see, um, I, I didn't mean to get into this yet, but you see some selling here. So right now, when I show you, because this today has the same look as the examples I'm showing you, I think we're gonna trade down in here. I mean, this is actually a good time to show this. I think we're going to trade down in here by the end of the day. This is a decent place to get short, right? Where you can get short as long as you start to see some actual selling, right? Let's see what the mini, mini S and P looks like. Again, I didn't have, I didn't plan to talk about this live, um, but so you see some liquidity here. I mean, it wouldn't be surprising to see it go up into this, but you know, spy wise. You can get short here and risk right here. So you're getting short at 249 with risk up to, you know, 250 and a half, right? So again, it's all about risk reward because if you are right, yeah, you're risking two bucks or a buck and a half. If you're right, this thing's going $9 at least to here, probably to here. So again, it's finding the right area, having a bias, um, having a thesis, and then finding the right areas for your high risk reward where I know if I get short here, I'm only risking here. And granted, it could go through here then you're going to be wrong again 50% of the time. But I can tell you right now, if this comes up and eats into this and it fails, I'm definitely getting short the mini S&P and then my stop will be here because, you know, I think it's going to eventually again go down. This isn't pronounced. I mean, this is actually pretty pronounced. I, again, I, I'm telling you my from my experience, this is going to trade down here by the end of the day would be my guess. QQQ, same thing, comes up into this liquidity. You know, they just put this in now. Again, don't be surprised. Again, you could take a shot here. If you're wrong, wait for this liquidity. After that, there's not, there's nothing above here, right? And then look below. Right? Again, this is real time. This is, this is what I'm showing you where you know this is the big money. This is the money that wants to get filled, needs to get filled. This market will trade in some of this liquidity by the end of the day. I will almost guarantee it because they will make it trade in the liquidity. You have to, you have to think about the markets 
like you're the big trader, right? And you, you're running the show. What are you going to do? You're going to let all these, all the retail clowns push it up thinking, oh, this is the big bounce I've been looking for, you know, and then you, you can wait, you wait, and then you eventually push it down into your orders. Then you get long in good, at good prices, not at crappy prices, right? And that's what, that's what, this is retail trading, getting long here. This is professional trading, getting long down here. So again, that was real time. Um, I got on a tangent there. Uh, and it, did that answer the question? Oh, Bruce? yeah, and then some, and you probably answer some, <laughs> some other following questions here. But uh, uh, just, just, um, I, I'll, I'll quickly answer this one. I already did for Michael in the uh, in the chat, but uh, uh, he's asking how do you how do you know that they the, they want to go to that those liquidity levels? Um, you've you've already answered. Well, because they're, go right. ahead. Well, because they're sitting there, and again, when you see orders sitting in there from the open they want to be filled, right? This isn't a game where you get an algorithm. Um, I'll just give you a quick example here. I was, I'm gonna show this as well in my other examples. Um, if I could find it, there it is. So this is what <laughs> algorithms look like. I mean, look look at this monstrosity, right? You don't wanna be participating, and this is, this is this is a, a market where they're putting in pulling, putting in pulling, putting in pulling, right? So this is a market where you know it's real. This is a market where they're just trying to whipsaw retail traders all day long. This is market where you know, see it's already starting, right? And again, I, of course I'm not trading this right now because I'm talking, but um, this the point is when you see this size that stays in here like this, the market is going to gravitate towards that because the market makers who put this in are the ones that control the market. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and uh, Michael's asking again, is Michael, like if, if they, um, you answered it before Scott, and your point was this, um, that uh, the larger players, like they can't run price against them. They need to get filled with limit orders. Okay. So they need to set those orders uh, and then do something in the market to try to drive price into them. I mean, think right. of it, think of it like, you know, uh, um, it may be a dumb analogy, but it just came to mind is, uh, you know, if, if you're like uh, hunting Buffalo <laughs> hundreds of years ago, um, you know, you, you, you don't have very much power, but like uh, if you scare or make the tactic to drive the Buffalo like off a cliff, you know, that, that's kind of what they're doing here. Um, you know, it's like they already know where the cliff is and, uh, and they're setting their orders and they're, and they're trying to drive price into it. And exactly. Because Michael, you know, like I was saying earlier, one, they're professionals. They want to get filled at the best prices. Two, if these guys turn around and try to buy this kind of size, here's a hundred thousand here, 85,000 here, all represented obviously by this line, which is much easier to read in book map. If they turn around and try to buy that type of size, this market's going to fly off the page, right? And then, then their boss is going to come to them and say, what the hell are you doing? Why are you paying up? Why would you put in that many orders at that kind of size and chase the market and just cost us, you know, tens of millions of bucks possibly. So the point is they want the best prices. So eventually, they will get the market to go into their orders. That's what I'm trying to say. You have, this is a treasure map. You know where this market is gonna end up by the end of the day. It could happen right now. It might take to the end of the day, but your bias looking at this is being short today. That means not playing games, being long, in my opinion, right? This is what I do. I don't play games with the long. I wait for my areas that I know I can risk as little as possible for a move, a huge move, right? This is a if it gets to this first liquidity, that's a that's a eight dollar nine dollar move. This is a thirteen dollar move. This is a eighteen dollar move, right? I want to risk three bucks, two bucks to make eighteen bucks. That's how that's how you become a successful trader. Not I need to be involved in every every movement of this market because that's what that's what these algos want you to do, and that's why ninety eight percent of traders fail because they feel like every time the market moves they have to be involved. If you instead, this allows you to be a sniper and wait, and wait, and wait, and know exactly what's going to happen. I mean, this again, there is no program out there that I have ever seen that gives you this kind of transparency where you know what is going to happen, right? When you look at this market, this is the example I got off track with, but how, how do you know, looking at this market, that this thing is going to turn around and sell off by the end of the day, right? How do you know this is the level where it's going to stop? 
How do you know this is where it's going to end up at the end of the day? You don't, right? And you got to remember, 95 plus percent of traders, this is all they use, right? So do you think you may have a little bit of an advantage if you're using the bar chart in conjunction with this? The answer is 100%. Again, take it from me. You know, I used to be the guy that played this game, you know, where I would put my resting orders in, in the order book and then I would wait, 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 and then I would use my size. You know, I can trade up to 3,000 contracts at a time back then and I would wait and then I would push it. I would sell, 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 sell and push it right in my bids, right? That's the game. If you know what the game is, it makes trading so much easier and you just wait for the game. Right. Instead of confusing yourself, trying to know, you know, when to buy, when, to, when, to, when do I get in here? Do I get out? Just know I want to find the best places to get short. Right. And this again, the first great spot to get short was at this heavy liquidity. Right. So you want to see it hold here again. If it doesn't, then it's probably going to go up to here. And this is probably even the final. And by the end of the day, it'll make its way down here. So. Got off track there. What? How long do we have, Bruce? Just is this an hour? Can I go over? What? Um. Yeah. Yeah. We we can go over a bit. Um. Not not okay. much. I mean, uh, you know, people's attention span. Like, uh, uh, oh, yeah, it's, yeah. it's up to you guys. But uh, you know, we we try to keep it at an hour for everybody. Um, okay. Uh, so I'll I'll go through these quickly because I kind of already went over this because um, I have a lot of examples for other uh, instances. But okay. So this is what I was showing you where that news came out or the Fed liquidity came in uh, middle of the day. Once you start seeing the selling, again, this is just like the example we're looking at now. If you start seeing this come in, that's your cue. You can either play a liquidity level, right? So you can either play off liquidity levels that are resting in the book and see how the market reacts to them. And then, you know, you get short here and put it just above. Or if you start seeing heavy selling, right? That's another cue that you can use to get in, which was this example, right? Because there was really no liquidity up until this point because it was a news driven event, right? So once you see this, you can get in, put your stop here, knowing I've got an 80 plus percent chance that this is gonna trade in at least one of these liquidity levels by the end of the day, right? So that was uh, S&P, or that was the uh, SPY. This was, okay, so then this was the, this is what happened, right? So we'll just go through this quickly. So lo and behold, you know, this was the mini S&P. So I, this is obviously you know, late in the day, but it ended up, and I'll show you more condensed version in the um, spies and the queues, but you can see, you know, you had all this, this is the rest of the quid was in there the entire day, ends up right through it. These traders get filled like they wanted to, then it, then it rallies right at the end of the day. Um, it's more pronounced in these examples here. So this so is the, so guys, like, um, there's lots of questions in here. Um, these are excellent questions, and it would be great to to, to get to all of them. I just, I'm just going to um, say this. I, we'll try to get to them here, um, but I'm putting uh, Scott's email and his contact information in here. Uh, just email him your question, okay? Yeah, and then I, you know, again, like you said, I do mentoring um, where I can walk you through this and what I see and how I see it. Uh, this is obviously a very condensed version, but. Um, yeah, email me, you have my email um, and my website as well. Um, so this was the SPY by the end of the day. Here was the selling we were talking about. You could have shorted here, stop here. Lo and behold, through the first level of liquidity and then the market closed. You know, it didn't get down here, but you got, you know, right here, you probably sold around 263-ish, risking the 266, and you got to move down to 248. 250. So even 250, even if you got out right here, <laughs> you made $13 risking three. That's how you make money, right? Knowing this market, they're going to force it into some of these orders, but if not all of them by the end of the day. Um, so that was the SPY. This is what it looked like in the queues. Yeah, queues. So the, this is even a better signal here to short. Um, you could have shorted as soon as you saw them fighting back. And then moves right in the end of the day, right on the quitter. You see how this was in here the entire day. This was from the open after it was limit down all day. So what do you think is going to happen? They're going to get it to their orders so they can get filled. Um, oh, and the other thing I wanted to show too. So this was the NASDAQ. This shows how ridiculous this is. So a lot of times, because the NASDAQ is so, um, here we go. And I'm going to show you another example of me being long the NASDAQ, but this is, so NASDAQ is so, I showed you that Christmas tree looking thing, that was the NASDAQ, right? So a lot of times 
you have to condense the thing way down so you can get an idea of what's really happening. So this was the move up. Now, this was the only liquidity level when you condensed it. And look how far away this is, right? This is, you know, from the high, this is 600 points away, right? Boy, there's no way that would make it there by the end of the day, right? <laughs> well, let's see here. And here you go. Well, lo and behold, right to that level. Isn't that amazing how that happens? I mean, that that's my point. Like, <laughs> granted, you know, you short here, you got to risk 100 points, but it's not that you have to trade. You can trade the Qs, and I gave you examples where you can get in there. But my point is, it look, I mean, it went exactly to this level. This thing stayed in the entire day, and lo and behold, right down to it. Again, it's a treasure map. If you know what the big money is doing, Using book map is like having a treasure map. I can't stress it enough. Um, next example, this was, I already had that one. Okay, so this is uh, this is crude the other day. Uh, this was the day that it was limit down. Let me show that one first. There we go. So this was crude, it was limit down. Uh, this was Monday. Uh, when it was dropped, I'm not limit down, I'm sorry, when it was down 30% overnight, it dropped from like uh, 40 to 27 overnight. I've never seen such a move in my entire life. So when it finally, when it opened, opened up for the regular session, so again, you condense it, you see what the liquidity is and, and try to make a judgment on where this market, what the big money wants to do here, right? So I bring this up, there's liquidity here, and then there's big liquidity here, big liquidity here. I'm thinking to myself, this thing is so beaten down. I want to lean long initially, right? But not that I want to lean long, that I, I don't want to get in the way. I, I want to be short, but I want to wait because I know this thing is going to probably pop. Again, there's no reason to get involved in this area. This is this is why Bookmap is so incredible, right? You know, if you get involved in this area, there's a very good chance this is going to happen, right? Where you get whipped back and forth. And I know all traders know exactly what I'm talking about. You want to wait to see what it does at these liquidity levels to make your decision, right? So lo and behold, this market opens up, here's the buying. You know, so I, I mean, I guess if you wanted to get long, you could have got on when you saw the big buying. But again, you got to risk some, you know, you got to risk 60, 70 ticks. That's why you trade the, you know, the uh, the mini uh, oil. But, you know, if you want to get involved here, if you don't have the a large enough account size. But anyway, you see the buying come in. So this tells me immediately, this is probably going to these liquidity levels, right? Because these guys, the big money wants to get filled, right? So let me pull this up here. There it is, right? So lo and behold, right through it, right through it. So now if you want to get short, you don't just blindly, right? Because this is still in the book, right? You get a little bit here, and then you get some here too, which was in the, the basically the area was at the open. So you want to get short. You're not getting short yet, right? The, the buyers are still winning. I mean, granted, there's no liquidity up here, because so that tells me it's going to come back down. But I want to I want to wait and see this this area that it blew through. I want to see it get back below there. This area back below there, because one, the big money got filled, so they're done. Now they, you know, the guys that wanted to get short, now they're short. Now now they wanted to go down, right? Two, the retail trader that bought here, 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 now it goes in their face, they're, they got to puke, right? So this was at an actual trade. I think I have the trading, oh, one second. Yeah, all right, so this actually shows some of my, you know, my areas that I traded. So this was that move up, right? So, and you can see it's like, you know, you're not always, you're not right every time, but there's no reason you can't get out, cut your loss, and then wait for your next opportunity. And this is a perfect example, right? So the thing rips through, rips through, I don't get involved. Once it comes below this this liquidity level here, I short it, right? It comes down. Now in my mind, I needed to see it clear this liquidity level where this big buying took it out, just like I did here. I wanna see it clear down get below here and then I know I'm golden, then I know it's going down here, right? Lo and behold, stops here, which happens all the time where it'll stop at the level. I see buying, I scramble, I get out of half of my position, right? So you can see where my stops were. So again, 
if you have a small account, you can't, I was risking like 80 ticks here. Once I saw the selling come in, I was risking from here to here. These were my stops. This is another incredible thing about Bookmap, multiple incredible things. One, you can see exactly where your orders were, what you were thinking, what you were doing. Two, you can go back and you can replay every single minute of every day in, you know, and you can watch it in at increased speed. So you can watch it 256 times the normal speed and more. So you can start to learn how to trade instead of watching every minute of every day of the markets, which I had to do back when I was a scalper. So, you know, D Dr. Brett Steenbarger talks about one of the things that separate the great traders from the mediocre traders are the great traders practice, right? You can't get a better, a better thing to practice with than book map. You can bring up every day, you record your day and you go back and you, and you, you play it out and say, okay, I would have done this. I would have done that. You get so much experience condensed that you can be a great trader in a few months, right? Because you have this program. That's another incredible thing. But anyway, so I get short here, get out of half because it starts to, you know, it didn't, it didn't blow through this. I got out of half and I'm now I'm thinking, okay, now I'm going to get stopped out of this. I'm wrong, which happens all the time. But again, I'm trying to control my risk. Yes, 80 ticks sounds like a ridiculous amount to control your risk. But in these markets, I know I'm risking 80 ticks to, to possibly make, you know, $3, right? So three or $4. So it comes up here, liquidity comes back in, they try to push it through. Now the selling comes back in. I still have my original part of my position on. I'm thinking, okay, I'm golden. And then it comes it comes down through here. It starts to starts to break where this buying came in. Then it looked like it was gonna do the same nonsense. And then it came back through. And now I, you know, now I got in my other half that I that I got out here. Again, you can get out and get back in once you see what you want to see. I finally saw what I wanted to see, meaning it cleared below this level. Now I know. The smart money has been filled. The dumb money is now going to puke because they chased it up, right? And then lo and behold, shockingly goes right to the liquidity. You can see where I got out. So I got out of some here. I got out. Of, so when it did this and started coming back here, I got out. I got out of the um, another portion, and then another portion here when it, it looked like it was going to go, um, kind of like I did here. And, and then I was out, but then again, then I got back in just with a little portion here because it got back below, right? And I, and again, my goal was, I thought by the end of the day, it can get to this liquidity. So I got, I got back in a little piece and then I, my, you can see where my stop was put in here. And then lo and behold, right to the liquidity by the end of the day. Just, it's just amazing how, how, how smart these guys are, right? Because you know exactly what, this is a treasure map. I knew it was going to happen. You just have to find the right places to do it. And again, if you're wrong, wait till you see what you want and then get back in. This is a perfect example. I'm, I'm glad I had this up here. Any questions on that, Bruce? Only a couple more examples. So hope I'm not talking too fast either. No, we just have many, many questions here. Um, I'm <laughs> really not even sure where to where to start. Um, okay. So um, <clears throat> well, let me get, let me, I'll, I'll go through these examples real quick and then, um, so this was the chart of the day uh, that I just that I just traded. Right, oh, sorry, it's right here. So you can see again, you're trading on a bar chart. What, what, why are you getting short here? It, it, there's no there's no structure to lean on, right? I mean, this is the DVA, um, that, which is a, um, a standard deviation. This is VWAP, the blue line. Then these this is two standard deviations for VWAP, which I use. I make trading very simple. That's all I use. But I guess you could have traded here. But again. I don't trade a VWAP or uh, the uh, DVA daily, daily value area high. This is daily value area high, daily value area low. I don't trade here unless I see confirmation in the order flow, right? Which this was. So the point is, if you're just trading off a bar chart, you tell me how you catch catch that without just getting lucky, right? You don't. So this is getting lucky. This is being informed, knowing what happened, knowing where it struggled, knowing where it's going. You don't ever see that in a million years in a bar chart, right? So again, if you're a successful bar chart trader, great, more power to you. Just think how successful you'd be adding book map in where you can see real-time volume and know what games are being played and where the big money is playing. Um, only a couple more examples here and then I'll take a couple questions. Um, okay, so this was NASDAQ on um, the 13th, right? So this gives you another example on so it's not just always short. I'm not just cherry picking because the market sells off every single day. So this was uh, last Friday. Yeah, Friday the 13th. So again, you're trading off a bar chart. 
and this thing stops here and then ends up ripping at the end of the day. So what, why, why are you going to get long right here if you're training the bar chart? Like, what, what's the reason? There's, what structure are you using to get to get long besides guessing and getting lucky, right? So now you bring in book map, and so that so this is what I mean about. So when I when I use the Nasdaq, when I when I look at the Nasdaq or trade it, this is what I do. I mean, I don't usually trade the Nasdaq. I'll trade the Qs instead of the Nasdaq because again, I have a, a account where I can trade stocks. So Nasdaq, you have to condense it, especially nowadays, and which is really surprising to me. The algos have really taken over during this volatility period, and I thought it'd be the opposite, right? I thought they'd be out of the way. They are full force, right? So you can't really see what what's going to happen as far as the treasure map I've been talking about especially in the NASDAQ, unless you condense it, right? So basically to condense, you just go to this side and this is a, this is a screenshot, so I can't do it. Um, I'll show you here with the real time, all right? So if I wanna condense, this is what I, you just go over here and you pull it down, right? So again, look, look at all this liquidity. Look at the buying still happening and that's fine, right? But the minute you start seeing the selling, this is where it's going. So anyway, I'm just showing you where you can kind of, for the newer users, you can pull this up and down. So you pull it down, and then you get this kind of look where it's a lot more clear what's going to happen, right? So this was this was at the open, around the open or hour into it, it did this and then came down here. So there was no liquidity below here. This thing turns around and rips. By the end of the day, shockingly, you guys should all be shocked by what I've told you so far that it made it into this liquidity and this liquidity by the end of the day. Again, if you when you bring this map up at the beginning of the day and you see, because this is from the open, you say to yourself, it tried initially and it came down here. You're telling yourself, I want to be long. I need to find the best area to be long because I know by the end of the day, this will be at at least this liquidity level and probably this one. And Lombo, and you got to remember, this is a 400, 500 point move in the NASDAQ, right? So the point is, well, where do you get long? There's no liquidity. What do you do? That's why you use these other markets that you have access to, if you get the DX feed, you have access to the stocks. That's why you use these other markets to help you judge, right? So this was the cues, right? So this was down here, here's the cues. Look how I could have used this to determine either getting along the NASDAQ or getting along the cues. This is a different look than this as far as helping me decide where I want to get long, right? So it busted through this liquidity here, they sold it. Now this is telling me like, I ideally wanted this area here, right? But obviously in trading, you don't get what you want most of the time. I start seeing this buying come in, I'm like, okay, then maybe not. I see it come here and then it kind of starts to hesitate, hesitate, and then the buying comes in. So you could have, you know, if, if you, you know, you of course, like I showed you with the treasure map, you want to be getting leaning long, finding your areas to get long. This is your first try to get long where you see it can't hold below this liquidity it, it tried to sell through. You see the buyers fighting, the buyers fighting, and the buyers are getting bigger. You can get long here. You can risk down below here. And then if you're wrong, if you're wrong, then you wait for this next liquidity level. Again, you're not always going to get the exact areas you want. So this was a way for you to know in this chart where to get long, right? So you can either trade the Qs and you're using this reference level to trade the NASDAQ, or you can just trade the Qs. But again, you know that this market is going to this area at some point in the day. That is, that's night and day. If you know, you know what's going to happen eventually. That, I mean, you can't get any better than that with, with this program. So, and then lo and behold, this is the move up. Um, I'm gonna come. So a qu yeah, question on um, <clears throat> how are okay. they driving it toward those areas? There's a, a bunch of questions uh, regarding this. How are they driving it? Yeah, to They're, toward those areas of high liquidity. Well, you can see it. They're they're buying the shit out of it. Pardon my language. They, again, this is a, this is why I know this is happening because you have to remember this is what I used to do. I used to be this trader, right? I used to be this kind of size where I would put a thousand, two thousand resting orders. Then I would wait. Then I would wait, and then then I would gradually start to you know, especially when you you know the, these these guys see openings where there's not a lot in the book, and then they start to play their games. And if they can get a little momentum. And they get the closer it gets, then the more they can add in their size to push it into their orders, right? So that's all this is. They wait, they wait. This is again, this is just like what I used to do. I used to wait in the mini SP, I would have my resting offers in, just like this. Pretend this is these are my resting offers. As soon as I it started to kind of creep up, I would buy, I would just literally force it. 
I would buy, 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 buy. And I only had 3,000 contracts. I say only because some of these firms, they've got, they could put on 20,000 contracts uh, of futures, right? So they will buy until they they know that the retail trader, the momentum traders are going to jump on the, their coattails when they see, oh, here comes some big buying, and then they're going to force it right into their offers. And then that's exactly what happened right through them. So that's how I, I know because, or that's how they get it there because they, they force it into their orders, right? So that, again, I know that because I used to do it. Um, Excellent. That, okay, so that this is an example. So if you questions, yeah. Okay. So if you didn't use this to get in the NASDAQ, this is what you would have been looking at. So again, if you don't condense the NASDAQ and you're not using the cues in this instance to help you, um, this is what you'd be looking at to get in the NASDAQ. Tell me what you see here besides a, a Christmas tree, a painting. It's like, there's no, well, how are you gonna judge where to get long trading in the NASDAQ when you, when you actually expand it out? That's why you want these other markets, these tracking stocks, as your guide, right? Get the DX feed, have the QQQ, the SPY, even the VIX, the VXX, and see what's going on. So if you can't discern from this, then you go to this. Say, okay, now I have an area. Now I have a reference point where I can judge, where I can get long, even if you're trading the NQ. You, what are you trading off of? You, there's not, this, is, this is nonsense here to me, right? But I know in the queues, I know what the, where the areas are, which are obviously because this is a tracking stuff in the NQ, so I have a very good idea where I can get long the NASDAQ. Um, okay, I think there's one more example here. Okay, so this is this is my stock example, right? And again, I haven't been trading that many stocks lately, just because you know when when volatility gets over 20, 25, everything everything trades with the market, right? So there's no use of, of trading stocks because they're just going to move with the market. So this was uh, Zoom, uh, the stock Zoom on 3.5. And amazingly, I know you guys aren't gonna believe this, but look look at all the liquidity in here. I, I'm gonna give someone a guess on where this market's gonna end up trading to, right? Again, it happens in every market. It happens in gold, it happens in oil, it happens in equities, it happens in, in E-mini S&P, everything, right? So here's the, here's the smart money with all their orders that wanna get filled, wanna get short, Whatever the reason may be, it doesn't matter. You know it's legit if it's in there the entire time, and you know your odds of it going to here are substantial. Again, it's a treasure map, right? So this opened up. So I, I trade a strategy, and I'll show you what that looked like on the bar chart. Um, I trade a strategy that uses VWAP. Um, again, you know, guys that want mentoring can contact me. I can teach you my strategies as well. But when it came down here, this is where I got long, knowing you know, because it ripped up, came down. Now I'm along on v, at VWAP, which is right around here, right? Knowing that it still has all this liquidity to trade into, right? Again, most amateurs will say, oh, I want to be short because I got all this. All these guys want to sell. No, it's the opposite. It's going, the market's going to move to this liquidity. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so I got long at 118-ish. I'll show you my my uh, stats here in a second from the P&L from that day. But you know I'm only I was only trading a 300 lot here in, uh, in stocks, which is not a lot. Not a 300 lot in futures. That's a different different story. Um, so this was you know this is where I got long. It was down here actually at 118 the VWAP, like I showed you, um, which was right around here, right. And then lo and behold, all that all that liquidity. This is more condensed, but you can see. Um, let me bring this up real quick, right? So this was all that liquidity, right? So you saw it at 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, and, and above. I just don't have it at, um, or condensed. Um, so you can see trades through 121, 122, 123, 125. It's just, it's, it's, like, it's like you're a fortune teller, right? It's amazing how this happens. And then, so at this liquidity, it starts to kind of, kind of, Look like it's going to sell off and again held right where the big buyers were at this liquidity level goes up so now it gets up here and i know all this liquidity has been filled and i see it kind of struggling and i actually flip which i don't do very often but i flip because i just i knew this was way overdone especially and this is another thing i use another strategy with the vwap and the dba i knew this was overextended and i knew i had this to lean on so i got short around 128 and a half ish or 128 I had my stop up here, 130, because again, if it rips through here, which it very well could, like it did here, then I'm great. 
great, I lose two bucks, but I know if I'm right, I'm gonna make at least at least three bucks down here. Um, this first liquidity level where it kind of hesitated, we couldn't get through, right? So I'm short up here and I, I'm hoping it comes all the way back down all these other, and that's another thing, these prior liquidity levels, they're still reference points for you, you know, when the market's moving back down. So you can know, okay, where were these big buyers? Where are these buyers gonna try to defend their positions, right? This is just a wealth of knowledge that 99% of traders do not have, probably more. So I get short up here and then, um, and actually, I don't know if I have the chart of it. Yeah, I don't have the chart of it, but this is my um, this is my P and L for that day. Again, I was only three hundred lot, but you know, I got long at one eighteen. I sold, you know, I got out a little bit early here because I was doing what I was doing as I was trading. I was getting out in that liquidity as it was moving into it because you never really know where it's going to stop. Um, but I think I did a, which was right here. Um, right, so I sold some at 121, some here, some here, and some at 125. Um, and then what I did, yeah, 124. So I was a little before that liquidity and I'm out. So then I'm just waiting because I know it's overextended. So, you know, I made 1300 bucks on a 300 lot, which is good. And then I ended up getting short at that area I showed you, right? Around 129 actually. And I wrote it down to, 123 and then I got out of the last portion of 125 and that was all contingent on the um here right so I I was I got short here and then I wrote it down I knew this was a reference area and I, I'm sorry I don't have the rest of this but it actually ripped right through it and I'm like oh cool I'm going to get it all the way down here and it kind of hesitated so I got out here again using this as a reference point then it started to trade above 125 again and I just got out because I didn't want to see it come all the way back out but again all this is based on the liquidity and what the big money was doing and knowing where it was gonna go and knowing where it was failing to get through after it was extended, because you can see there's no liquidity above here. And this was actually the high of the entire move up until today, this is March 5th. It's done nothing but sell off. I think it's trading like 90 something now. So again, if, if you're using Bookmap, you're an informed trader and you have an edge that 99.99% of traders don't have. Um, And then the rest is just today, basically what I was showing you. You know, again, you're looking, this was the Imini today, uh, Imini S&P, you can see all this liquidity that I'm sure is still in the book if I bring it up real time. Um, this was the SPY, again, this is today. So you should know today as a trader, you should be looking eventually at areas to get short. So I think, I think the SPY is up at 250 right now. Um, it's actually through there. So again, eventually I'm waiting. So again, if you're trading SPY, why are you getting short yet? You're not, right? Or I'm not. I'm waiting to see like what I showed you in that other example with the news story that came out. I'm waiting to see some heavy selling fight back. Then I'm starting to pay attention, right? Then I see, and then what I, if, I see some, if I see some big red bubbles, I'll get short and then I'll put my stop right above there. And I might get stopped out, but I'll do it again because there's not really a lot of liquidity to, to lean on right here. Um, you know, when you expand it, it does, but that's just, it's all relative, right? So this is liquidity, but it's not as heavy liquidity as this liquidity, right? Which again, I think that's where this market is going to eventually. But you can use this as reference points, right? And see how it reacts. Again, I'm not selling this until, where are the sellers winning here? This is, again, this is real time. They're, they're not winning. So why, why, am I, why do I wanna be short if the big money is not ready to, to engage on the short side, right? So again, you're patient. You know, yes, sometimes it hurts, this thing rip up but if you're not informed and you don't know why it's ripping up why do you want to trade it right because you never know when it's going to flip i know from my experience that there's an 80 percent chance it trades back down here by the end of the day so i'm just looking for shorts right now i'll let them play their games let them play their games let all the big money get filled and then when i see the sellers come in i'm engaged risking you know hopefully not too much to make you know this could this is going to probably if this does, does what i think it's going to do it's going to be a 15 20 move by the end of the day Right. And then the other thing, too, is this is my last thing, and I can take some questions. Is you know, some days it, it doesn't happen very often. You know, like I said, it's about 80%. This will trade down here by the end of the day, from my experience. But some days it might just hang up here. But lo and behold, track of these levels, screenshot them, bring them up tomorrow. And you watch if this opens up tomorrow and these same orders are in this book, this market will find its way down here eventually. Right. So 
that that's the whole point. And granted, you you want to find areas that you're risking a little, you know, because I know what people are saying. I'm like, well, great, I, I know the market's going down here. How much do I have to lose to figure that out? Well, that's the point. You want to find areas that you can be risking a little, even if you're wrong three times, you know, risking two bucks. When you're right, you're going to make 15 or 20. That's the whole point of trading, right? You've got to accept being wrong. And then when you catch it, you're going to catch the $15, $20 move, right? So again, you want to find areas, and this is what Bookmap affords you to know the areas where this may struggle, right? So here's another liquidity level where, you know, if I, well, again, if I start seeing some selling and then I see it go below this, I'm going to short it and then I'll put my stop here. If I'm wrong, then I'll wait for up here. But eventually, again, this this is liquidity, but it's not as heavy as this, right? So you just got to be careful of saying if you have your if you have your charts like this, you're going to confuse yourself with the liquidity. That's why because there's liquidity everywhere when it's relative when you expand it, but when you shrink it, that helps you know where the where the big money is, especially if it's been there the whole time. All right, so that, that's my presentation. I know I went through it pretty quick, but I got off track there with the real time stuff. Um, so I can answer any questions now. Oh uh, yeah, no, that was great. And and really, there's guys. I, it, just to be fair to everybody here, I mean, there's quite a few questions, and we've already been like, going for about an hour and ten minutes. Um, so I, I think you're just going to have to to reach out to Scott. I'll, I'll put the email again in here uh, for you guys uh, to to reach out and and just uh, e email him directly. Um, I think that would be best. <laughs> Um, one thing that um, you, you, I mean, just really fascinating stuff, uh, Scott, especially like uh, at the end there. Um, and we, we've seen this like in the in the advanced webinars, like on Friday, we saw this. Um, sometimes it just doesn't make any sense. You're like, well, I know that liquidity's down there and, you know, they're, they're you know, and then they're still down there. And they still want to get filled, but it, it's driving away from those areas. Well, on the higher right. time frame, though, you know, this might unfold over a few days. But when it doesn't make sense, it's going this one direction. Uh, uh, right. But you know where they are, and you know that they're getting filled. That these these offers, for example, on the way up, they're getting filled, right? You're just waiting for those sellers to come in and look on the higher time frame. They will get to those other other levels. You know, high exactly. probability. Right, and you can see here too. This is the mini S and P real time. I mean, yes, yeah, you're again. I keep saying you're, but I'm I'm personally looking for shorts, right? So. But that doesn't mean I'm just blindly shorting in, into this liquidity, right? Look, look, where where are the sellers winning here? Look at this. I mean, they try to fight back a little bit here. You know, again, you could have shorted here and then risked a little bit here. But again, when I say little, it's all relative because now you're risking 20, 30 points in the mini S&P. That's why you trade the micro. But again, look at the buying that is coming in here. Like, regardless if I if I want to be short or not, it doesn't mean I'm just throwing on a trade. I'm waiting to see that I'm an area where I'm right, where the sellers are fighting back. You want to trade where the big money is trading real time. And that's what Bookmap shows you, right? You get to see what the big money is doing. The, if you have a bar chart up, you don't, what are you seeing here? Like, I, I don't understand, like here, this is a, right? So where, where are you, where are you, how do you know? How do you know what's going on? I mean, you see the, you see the big, buy bars but you don't know you don't know is, are the sellers fighting back are the are, the, are the buyers overwhelming you look at this the buyers are overwhelming there's going to be times where the chart looks like this and it's the same exact look again because it's a bar chart you don't have all the information then when you bring up the the book when you bring up book map and you see red 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 and then it starts to actually turn over you know that the sellers are fighting back you will never know that from a bar chart that's my point that's why this is the most powerful program you can ever use for your trading. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'm really, I'm sorry, guys, to, to cut you off. I mean, there's some really nice questions in here, um, and uh, there's just so many. Um, we'll just, you'll just need to reach out to Scott, I think, um, would be the best. Uh, I, I was thinking I'll, I'll send the, the list to Scott, but... Uh, you know, we get in trouble when we start sending email lists to, or, you know, or people that ask questions. So then it, it's up to you guys. You, you'll just have to reach out to Scott. You have his email um, and uh, uh, that would be the best way. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, special offers, uh, David. Also, um, uh, HE uh, is talking about that. Uh, I put the links in there uh, for Bookmap. Um, it's in the chat. 
So, you know, it says special book map offers from Scott. Uh, click on that HE. That's the one I clicked on. It, it works for me. Um, it, I, you, it should be working for you guys as well. Uh, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, you have all the contact information there. Um, and uh, everyone, thanks for coming. Um, thank you very much, Scott. It's, it's always fascinating. Um, and uh, uh, to see the other side of, uh, of the trade here and, um, um, you know, what, what's really going on in the, in the bigger picture in the game here. Uh, so I will have the um, uh, recording up on uh, our YouTube channel um, under Pro Trader Webinar Series. Uh, give me about uh, two or three hours, though. It's going to take a little while for it to parse, et cetera. Okay. Uh, any, uh, any other uh, parting uh, uh, wisdom, uh, Scott? Um, besides the sellers, are they starting to fight back a little bit here? Uh, no, but again, don't don't take my word for it, right? Again, in all trading, it has to be your your what you see and what makes sense to you. You don't trade what someone else is saying, seeing or thinking. You need to experience yourself. So again, watch this. Watch what I'm showing you happen. You know, with those examples for the next couple of days. Bring up your charts in the morning. Condense them. Bring up three or four markets. Look at the liquidity is, and then see for yourself. See for yourself what the market does by day's end or over the next day or two. See the areas that why it stops in certain areas, right? That's another thing about Bookmap is it tells you why things are happening. That's why traders get so frustrated because they don't know why they're losing. You know, when when, the, when you're looking at a bar chart, it just rips and rips and rips. You're like, why? When you look at this, this is why, because the, the buyers are overwhelming right here. There was, there was, they tried to stop it, the buyers bought right through it, right? So it's like, this tells you why things are happening, and again, once you start to understand the why, that's when the light will go on for you, where you will become a profitable trader and be able to control your risk and know what's going on and know the areas to get out and things like that. I mean, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg, what I showed you here. You can listen to some of my other webinars. I was a little more micro, but I just wanted to point that out on how incredible this is showing you what the big money is doing and what the big money doesn't really want you to know and what the big money really doesn't think you know. That's what's great about this. Like, Again, I, I tell Bruce all the time, I really don't want, I don't, I don't want this, <laughs> this program to get out there because I don't want people to know about it. But, um, you know, the, the funds, you know, they, they have this information and they can't be real happy that it's starting to get out to the general public, especially if they know how to use it. Um, so I think our window is probably two to three years and make as much money as we possibly can, you know, before they kind of figure a way out and manipulate this nonsense too. But um, we'll, you know, again, you have a window. I've shown you, you know, some pretty strong, I mean, look, so they're finally starting to fight back, right? So it's like, now you know, what area were they willing to fight back? Right here before this liquidity. Again, it could come up here again, and it probably will, right? Just because it's so beaten down. But if you see this come up here again and kind of stall at this liquidity again, and then turn over and you see selling again, that's when you get short. That's when you risk above here, right? So you're still gonna be risking 20 points in the mini S&P, which is a lot, trade the micro. And then you say to yourself, my first area that I'm looking to get out is in this area where the heavy buying came through because you know there's going to be people trying to defend it. Then if it gets through here, if it gets through this area here, I can almost promise you with 100% certainty it's going down here today, right? Because these guys that bought, just again, think of it like you're the big trader. You bought here, it trades through it. Oh shit, I got to get out, right? And this isn't a couple points. This is you know, this is 25 points lower, there's going to be some serious puking of all these guys that got in. So again, the more you watch this, the more you replay it, the more you listen to the webinars and kind of try to understand what I'm saying. And again, I'm here for you for mentoring if you guys want that, but you're going to see, you're going to be so much more informed than the average trader and you will be a successful trader by using Google Map. So thanks, right. Bruce. I appreciate you giving me a chance to get on. Uh, no, thank you very much, Scott. It's, it's really, really, really nice stuff. So um, thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, and uh, we'll uh, we'll have Scott again. Uh, we've just gone way over our time limit here. So uh, we'll catch up with you guys uh, another time. Thanks again, Scott. Thanks, Bruce. Okay, bye-bye.